Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be covering how to periodize and progress loaded power training to reach peak performance when it counts. Let's first establish what we mean by loaded power training. Loaded power training refers to exercises using an external load, where the goal is to fully accelerate through a range of motion. These are ballistic exercises, meaning that there is no deceleration phase. Exercises such as various jumps and throws fall into this category, since there is a complete acceleration throughout the entire movement. The only thing causing us to decelerate is gravity. Whereas classic strength exercises, like a squat or bench press, are not considered power exercises, since the movement inevitably must decelerate and come to a complete stop. Loaded power training primarily trains explosive power production with moderate forces and moderate velocities. Although movements seen in sports such as running and jumping are almost never loaded, adding load can have benefits to performance. Loaded power training provides an overloading stimulus for the athlete to adapt to, demanding more force to be produced in order to move the weight. This will then have positive transfer to unloaded exercises when performed during sporting competition and practice, since we may now be able to produce more force in the same period of time. Furthermore, loaded power training provides a variation to unloaded power training. This is important as we cannot always perform the most specific training at all times, otherwise performance will plateau eventually. We will now explore how loaded power training can be periodized throughout a year to reach peak performance when the athlete needs to perform at their best. When periodizing any athletic quality, we want to use more general methods of training further away from the time we need to peak and more specific training the closer we need to peak. This is because specific training will have greater transfer to sporting performance. So for loaded power training, we will start with more general forms and transition to more specific methods. Apart from volume, the primary component that can be periodized with loaded power training is the loading and speed of movement. The more load that is used, the slower the velocity will be, whereas the lower the load, the faster the velocity will be. As mentioned previously, movements like running and jumping seen in sport are almost always unloaded. Therefore, the less external load the exercise involves, the more specific it will be. So loaded power training should be periodized in a way which uses heavier loads further from when the athlete needs to peak and lighter loads closer to when the athlete needs to peak. However, since the athlete will still be performing other highly specific methods of training, unloaded power training will be covered. Therefore, we don't want to transition all the way to the point of using no external load. We still need to remember that the reason loaded power training is being included is due to its variation from specific training. Another common query when periodizing any form of power training is the idea of unilateral versus bilateral training, meaning single leg versus double leg. Most sports involve a multitude of movements such as accelerating, decelerating, high speed sprinting, vertical jumping and changing direction. Although most of these movements involve the legs working unilaterally, there are still instances of bilateral movements during sport. For example, vertical jumping often involves jumping using both legs. Therefore, it is my opinion that both unilateral and bilateral loaded power training should be included at all times. Therefore, the factors we will periodize for loaded power training will be the loading and velocity. As previously mentioned, less load will be more specific to sport performance and should be performed closer to the athlete's peak, while heavier power training should be performed further from the peak. An example of how loaded power training twice per week can be periodized over time may look something like this. In the early stages of preparation, or when the athlete is far from when they need to peak, they may perform heavier loaded exercises such as trap bar jumps and loaded step jumps. These exercises should be loaded quite heavy and therefore will move relatively slow. However, 
the intent should still be to jump as high and as fast as possible. These exercises are well suited to the early stages of preparation, not only for their heavy loads, but also because they involve concentric only muscle actions. One session may include the unilateral step jumps, while another session in the week may include the bilateral trap bar jumps. When the athlete is closer to when they need a peak, but not immediately prior, exercise selection may involve box drives and squat jumps with slightly reduced loads. These exercises will involve faster muscle actions if the loads are reduced appropriately. The squat jumps will also introduce the stretch shortening cycle and some eccentric loading. Once again, this can be undulated throughout the week with one day being bilateral and the other day being unilateral. Finally, when the athlete needs to be at absolute peak performance, we can use lighter loaded forms of power training. This may include lightly loaded exercises such as single leg lunge jumps and light squat jumps. Again, we're introducing slightly more eccentric loading with these exercises and the movements will be performed at a higher velocity. However, we are still ensuring that some external load is being used in order to provide the required stimulus. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.